Live from Idaho's News Channel 7, this is today's morning news. Good morning and welcome. We're talking about snow day number five. Here we Almost go again. All the school districts shut down again because we had a dumping of snow overnight. If you have not taken a look outside, do it right now. You will not believe it. After all the shoveling we've done and clearing of snow today, we have up to six inches again, so it's just incredible. Yeah, a lot of schools have canceled classes and we are still getting calls. Those include West Ada, Boise, CUNA, Nampa, um, Middleton, Melba, Parma, uh, just everywhere we're having on. school closures. This is video that our producer actually shot around, I think, 2, 2 o'clock this yep, morning, and showing how big the snowflakes are. Oh, the are. snowflakes were just huge. It was beautiful to look at, but not so much fun for all of us who have to shovel it, take care of it on our roofs, and of course, kids out of school again for day five. It just goes on and on, and we have live team coverage of the weather this morning for you. We're going to keep you posted about what's to come. Before we get to Joe Paris, live out on the roadways, let's get to the man who knows what's going on here, Larry Gebert. Find out more about today. Larry, what's going on here? Uh, well, we have gotten snow overnight with warmer temperatures, and that means heavy, wet snow. And we're also mixing in some rain in a few spots. So we've seen a rain-snow mix. We've seen some rain showers on top of this. Uh, as, like, as you mentioned, five to six inches in some spots. Other locations, maybe about one to two. But everybody saw snow once again. Some of the mountain areas are getting even more. It's just the nice thing about the mountain areas. They've got this winter storm warning. You can see how broad that is. And that's because it's going to be as much as a foot or more snow that we're expecting through the mountains. But anything above 4,000 feet is going to continue to be snow here in the valley we're talking about some rain showers that have been mixing in and so what that means is that we're going to be seeing some of this heavy wet snow and then we're going to see more melting as we go into this afternoon with additional showers still seeing some snow some of it a little bit lighter right now than other spots uh, in the magic valley we had everything from some warm temperatures to some snow and we've seen some melting out there joe's going to have more information of course for us on the roads we have limited visibilities in some spots especially around the haley area only one and a quarter miles temperatures are kind of cool cool for this morning but they're above freezing or at least near that in all valley locations. That's why we're seeing some melting. There's some wind making it feel a little bit colder to you out there. But in addition to that, we're talking about getting up to a high of 40 more showers, rain showers isolated at times. But now there's concerns about melting and concerns about flooding. Some flood warnings now have been stepped up instead of front advisories, more rain showers, and then it's going to be cold for the weekend. I'll have details about all that in a moment. All right, Larry, thank you very much. Well, we're seeing conditions like this out on the main roads today. It looked like the inner state was mostly wet at yeah. this point or perhaps slushy. Let's go to Joe and find out what he's been finding as he's been driving around on the highways as well as the main roads and side streets. Joe. Well, Doug, we've made it out to Caldwell now. We're driving down Cleveland and you can see uh, we're starting to get a little bit of rain snow mix here as we head down Cleveland Boulevard and the road in front of us, as you can see, it's snow packed and underneath that is a lot of ice. We were just on 10th and we were sliding all over the place. So the roads here in Caldwell, I say are actually a little bit worse than Nampa. We're actually even having a hard time keeping our camera mounted because our car is just being tossed everywhere all for the snow pack and the ice. As we come up to a stoplight here, you can take a look in front of us as the car slows down. Down. There's just so much snow that is packed down in front of us. As you can see, the car in front of us spin actually out of its wheels as it's trying to come into the green light. Uh, that's what we're seeing all over the Treasure Valley this morning and in Nampa and Caldwell and Boise, Meridian, Eagle. Everything this morning is really messy. Now, a real quick update on I-84. We're told there's a crash on I-84 and Eagle that's backing things up. So you got to be careful if you're heading down that way. You're going to have some extra time into your commute, even extra, even more extra time than you have right now. Uh, the roads are awful. I-84 is not good but, uh, before and after 10 mile heading to and from Canyon County. It is such a mess out there. The plows are out this morning across the Treasure Valley and doing what they can, but we got so much uh, snow and rain overnight that it's just packed into the street right now and it's making so slippery. You have that ground layer of ice that's underneath this snow pack and it makes everything just absolutely difficult to drive in. Even the main roads are looking awful this morning, so you're going to give yourself a lot of extra time you need to head out the door because these can Conditions are very bad. They're a lot worse than yesterday in some places, and the visibility, as Larry mentioned, is also getting low as we see this rain snow mix coming down into the Caldwell area right now. So, uh, if you do have to leave the house this morning, if you're not one of the lucky kids that don't have to go to school, you got to build yourself as much time uh, into your morning commute as you can. All right, Joe, thank you very much. I it's think some kids incredible. are even getting antsy. They want to get they back are. to school. My kid wants to go back to school. I know. I don't know, know if that's any indication about a really me. long holiday break. Yeah, he says, Mom, I'm ready. I miss school. I think a lot of kids feel the same way. Well, the warmer weather we've had the past few days may have uh, 
had snow melting from your roofs. Of course, now we just got another dumping, so we have to start all over again. Yeah, we do. And as Larry just said, colder temperatures are coming back in a couple of days, and that means you could see more ice dams on your roof when the warmer weather uh, melts the snow. It comes down to the edge of the eave and it freezes and starts to build ice dams like this. Then the melting snow gets trapped behind the ice and may seep under your shingles and ultimately into your house. The Minnesota based ice dam guys say the safest and most effective way to get rid of ice dams is with low pressure steam. We go up there, we remove the snow off the roof uh, and expose the ice dam and we use the machine to uh, basically just steam and melt the ice away off the roof. The ice dam guys also recommend to never hammer or chisel ice dams because that can cause more damage and more harm than good. We're learning more things. Mm -hmm. Who knew there was an ice dam guys, but now we know there is. And <laughs> homes aren't the only buildings affected by leaks. Local schools also springing leaks out there. A lot of schools affected by this weather. And uh, this is video of Trailwind Elementary in Boise where an entire hallway flooded yesterday. Check this out. The Boise School District has 16 schools with some kind of a weather issue right now. The Nampa School District has five. Yesterday morning we reported on flooding problems at Heritage Middle School, which is in West Ada School District, and at Rolling Hills Public Charter School, too. Another concern, the Payette County Sheriff's Office warning people to be prepared to evacuate because of a flooding threat. The Sheriff's Office is keeping a very close eye on an ice jam in the Snake River. A warning has gone out to people who live in the low-lying areas along the river. Officials say yes, uh, said yesterday the water began to rapidly rise two feet in one hour at one point. Trees also began to fall into the river, and that just adds to the ice jam. Right now, the sheriff's office says about five houses along the river are expected to flood, but that number could grow as the ice jam grows. And a local disaster declaration has been made by the Emmett City Mayor. That declaration says because of this unprecedented snowfall and the melting, it's authorizing the city now to use uh, the use that is of local disaster emergency plans, including calling on the assistance of the state for both funding and resources. Emergency declarations have been issued all over our area the past week. We know that including Ada County, Boise, Meridian and Twin Falls. Time now for weather on the 7s. Well, we are looking at some rather cold temperatures outside for this morning, but not that cold. In fact, we're just above freezing in a few spots, and we've had some snow. As much as four to six inches of snow in many locations, others around two to three inches, some even one to two, but all of this is heavy and wet. We're right at the freezing level at about 33. We still have some snow coming down in some areas, but it is a wet snow. So winds out of the southeast at about seven. Pressure is falling. Humidity is at 96%. We do have some reduced visibilities. Radars remain quite active. All of this area up here in the pink, that's a winter storm warning uh, that's been issued for several inches. In fact, more than a foot of snow through some of the higher elevations. Other areas are still looking at advisories for flooding, and we even have a warning now for flooding in the Magic Valley because we're now we're concerned it goes until about 10 15 this morning, and that's because we're talking about seeing some warm temperatures and also that heavy snow that's been coming through those areas. It's still into that 40 degree range around Jerome for this morning, and of course, we're still looking at some snow. Now, this I 84 corridor is an interesting one because this is one that typically has a lot of problems with some winds. There are some winds out there and we have some heavy wet snow. That is going to be an issue if you're going to be driving that direction. Back in the Treasure Valley, of course, we've had everything from snow to a rain snow mix. We're seeing some of that right now near the Nampa area, Caldwell area along the boulevard and we're seeing some rain showers in some of those locations. But again, it's just making everything a heavy and wet snow. As we put this into motion, you can see how at times it was even a little bit more rain that came through with that. That's why Probably Canyon County is going to be seeing a little bit more difficulties than what we will in the Ada County area, but there's still going to be some heavy and wet snow and it's going to make it difficult for driving. We'll be watching to see what Joe has for us all morning long because of that. As we take a look at that wider view, of course, you can still see this is coming in out of the southwest. And again, it's actually two components to this. The colder air is actually being trapped in a low pressure cell that's up a little bit higher. That's going to stay further to the north, but eventually we'll bring some colder air after this other system moves through. It is pushing moisture out of the southwest, which is warmer air. And even as you look at it, as it moves up into the Sierra Nevada, it turns to snow, but then shortly after it comes off the edge of that, it is still going back into some rain around some of the Reno area. And then that continues to see some of that warmer air moving through our uh, spot as well. So for us, we're going to be seeing this heavy and wet snow. We're going to get warmer temperatures and then some rain showers with that through today, tonight and into tomorrow. There's now concerns that we may end up melting nearly all of the valley snow because of this, and that's going to create more problems for 
flooding around the area. As you can see from our several first alert future cast, we're expecting to see more rain than anything else today, tonight, and tomorrow finally ends. Wednesday evening is going to finally wrap up, and then it gets cold and clear as we go into Thursday and Friday. So for the forecast today, let's go ahead and take a look at the Magic Valley first. This is where we'll see temperatures that'll be right around the mid 40s. Some of these temperatures have already been achieved, but we're going to be looking at mild temperatures, also colder temperatures, of course, for the central mountains. Here we're talking about as much as a foot of snow. For the west central mountains, some of the higher elevations, again, could get a foot of new snow out of this, and it will all be snow. Anything about 4,500 feet is going to be staying snow, but the valley locations will get some of this rain, which is why this concerns about the flooding, and of course, temperatures around 40 degrees and rain will mean problems here in the valley as well through tomorrow. Then there's your cool down into the 20s. It's going to be cold through the weekend. Maggie, Doug? Well, we just got word, Larry, that there's a late start for all schools in the Caldwell School District, so school will not be closed there, but just a late start, a 30-minute late start in Caldwell. And you're seeing video from the scene of a kidnapping and car crash that led to two deaths in Ontario yesterday. We'll have the latest developments in the case and what investigators are still trying to figure out. And later, the future of Idaho could be in President-elect Trump's hands. Governor Otter shared his plan for Idaho if he's called upon for Trump's cabinet. Is that a possibility? That and a State of the State recap coming up for you, so stay close. Well, here's the latest information on a developing story. It's about a kidnapping and deadly car accident that happened along Highway 201 near Ontario yesterday morning. Police have identified the suspect as Anthony Montwheeler. They say he was involved in a kidnapping and stabbing in the parking lot at the J&J Corner Store in Ontario. He drove away from the scene. Officers chased him. They say he then crossed the center line and crashed head on into an SUV. Police say the driver of the SUV was pronounced dead at the scene. The passenger was taken to the hospital and is in stable condition. Police say Montwheeler was taken to the hospital also with serious injuries. The victim in his pickup was also pronounced dead at the scene, but at this time, police do not know if the victim was killed in the crash or in the stabbing before. The kidnapping victim's car was found by Weezer police. They say it was just abandoned in the middle of traffic. Charges against the suspect are still pending at this point. Again, he is in the hospital. Ice dams causing leaks and water damage for many homes and businesses out there right now. The troubles are widespread and potentially expensive to fix. We'll have some tips to help you avoid a disaster. Also, Brandy Sindin is our Facebook friend of the day. She lives in Meridian. Have a great Tuesday, Brandy. And Doug brought up a good point. Remember way back when, when there was no the walkways snow on the were clear <laughs> and we could see grass once in a while? <laughs> Those days are coming oh, back. The good old days. They're coming back. And if you want to be our friend of the day on Facebook, we got to keep a good attitude during Absolutely. Snowmageddon 2017. Snowpocalypse. Log on to Facebook and like our page. Today's morning news. We'd love to have you. From News Channel 7. Time for 7 First Alert Weather. And the time is 6.17. Means it's also time to take a look at your national travel weather. You're looking at one of our sky cam shots where you can see we have more snow coming down in the area. And this is a heavy and wet snow because temperatures are warm enough. But now as we take a look over the nation for today, well, we're going to be looking at some other showers. And we're not the only ones that are suffering with some of this. It's happening in the midsection of the country as well. You may notice that there's some rain showers mixing with some snow turning to snow in some of the upper Great Lakes region. There'll be some problems through portions of Ohio, Indiana for today, stretching into Kentucky as well. In addition, of course, we are looking at some heavy wet snow because of the system that still persists out of the southwest coming into our area. First is snow changing to some wet rain snow, and that's what's making the heavy wet snow around the valley. Our own Joe Paris, of course, out on the roads again for today, still bringing us information. We're looking at temperatures that are a bit above freezing in much of our area, but the only spot that's cold is really the very upper midsection, still single digits. Your 7 first alert, 7-day forecast. We weekend is always in view. We have more rain showers than anything else along the way. There's concerns we may melt most of the valley snow, causing more problems for flooding. That'll be followed up with cold, freezing temperatures through the weekend. Maggie? Up and down, up and down. All right, thank you, Larry. And as you've no doubt noticed, the warmer weather this week melted a lot of snow and ice off your roofs. Now we have another dumping. As Larry mentioned, though, the warming trend is over. That means one major problem many of you are dealing with probably won't be going away anytime soon. KTVB's Morgan Boydston has more on what you can do to help prevent or remove those damaging ice dams. In our bedroom, we were getting ready to go to sleep and all of a sudden drip, drip, drip. Where's that coming from? And then it started coming down very, very fast. Sound familiar? And it just continued to grow and it, over in here, we started to see it come clear over here. The leak soaked parts of the Miller's master bedroom ceiling, wall and carpet. 
all thanks to ice dams that have been forming for quite a while. Right up along the gutters right there is where the ice dam had built up, and of course that's where the icicles were hanging. Minnesota-based Ice Dam Guys says when you have a lot of snow on your roof and it starts to melt because of warmer temperatures inside and outside your home. It comes down to the edge of the eave where it freezes and it starts to build an ice dam. The melting snow gets trapped behind the ice dam and can work its way underneath your roof shingles. So a lot of the leaking and the house damage is, is right about now is when you're going to see the worst problem. In the middle of the night, the Millers grabbed buckets of hot water, climbed on their roof, and slowly poured along the dam. As the problem is up around the corner is a second ice dam. Then Monday morning, they put a hose on the roof, melting that dam in the roof valley, got an extension pole, and broke off the chunks. So we hooked up the hose to the washing machine, which is right here, and then you can just pull the little lever here, and then the hot water goes out. You do have to be careful, as roofers say this isn't the best move for every house. Adding more water can, of course, add to the leak. The Millers, like so many homeowners, didn't know they had a problem until it was too late. But there are other solutions. Low pressure steam uh, is the best way to get rid of them. A safe and effective procedure, they cut off the ice. We go up there, we remove the snow off the roof. Uh, and expose the ice dam and we use the machine to uh, basically just steam and melt the ice away off the roof. Ice dam guys say do not hammer or chisel dams. It can cause more harm than good. To prevent the problem, seal up any air leaks into your attic. And better ventilation and better insulation are, are going to be two key things to help ice dams from not forming as well. But first and foremost... The best thing to do to prevent an ice dam is to get all the snow off of your roof. Morgan Boydston, Idaho's News Channel 7. Here this morning, you can take a look in front of us. We're here in Caldwell where conditions are getting bad. Stay tuned because in about 10 minutes, we're going to have a full report on what your morning commute will look like across the Trevor Treasure Valley. Drive safe this morning. On the Capitol Watch now, Governor Butch Otter gave his annual State of the State address before a joint session of the Idaho Legislature yesterday. The governor spoke for just over a half hour, which is one of his shorter State of the State addresses, too. Sure is. Education, though, dominated his speech, which he called his top priority for this legislative session. His focus is on improving education by attracting and keeping quality my teachers. My, education my first and most significant recommendation is for an ongoing allocation of $58 million implementing the career ladder pay model for our public school teachers. After the State of the State, the governor addressed the media in his annual January news conference, and he closed it out by addressing his application to be Secretary of Agriculture in the Trump administration. If I left tomorrow, I've left the state in pretty good hands because Brad Little would take over. And Brad Little has been an integral part of my administration since the day he raised his hand and, and put one hand on the Bible and took the oath. Otter said he believes the selection process for the job of Ag Secretary is over, but he has yet to hear who will be named as the final cabinet member in Trump's administration. Also at the State of the State address, we want to mention Governor Otter awarded Idaho's first ever Medal of Achievement to astronaut and teacher Barbara Morgan. Barbara was an elementary teacher at McCall before joining NASA's teacher and space program. Doug knows I'm totally starstruck <laughs> by Barbara Morgan. I embarrassed myself at a restaurant with her one time. I was so excited to Barbara see her. Morgan. Barbara Morgan! She later trained as a NASA, a NASA mission specialist and flew on the Endeavour Space Shuttle in 2007. The award is Idaho's highest civilian honor. She's the first ever to get it, and you know what makes she's it even better? She's a nice lady. She is. She's the so and the state great. of the state address was wasn't without some controversy. Mm -hmm. Supporters of the Add the Four Words movement staged a silent demonstration during the event. They walked around the Capitol Rotunda with signs of examples of discrimination against LGBTQ Idahoans. Add the Four Words supporters want the words sexual orientation and gender identity added to the Idaho Human Rights Act. And a group spokesperson says they're hopeful they will be able to work with lawmakers to reach that goal this legislative session. Along with speaking about education in Idaho, Governor Otter also touched upon issues like cybersecurity and improving the mental health system. Now, if you missed the State of the State Address or you want to rewatch it, we've posted the entire State of the State Address 
on our website for you at ktv.com so you can check it out there and see anything that you might have missed during that speech. Let's talk about these school closures now and the weather, Larry. A lot of people waking up today looking out their windows going, what in the world? Six inches of new snow for some Five on to the six ground. Inches, yeah, and, and, and more still coming down. And it's a heavy and wet snow because we're mixing in some rain with it at the same time. We still have some flood advisories. We do have a flood warning in the Magic Valley. Get to that in a moment. But even as you take a look at the Treasure Valley, what we're looking at right now is the Nampa Caldwell Boulevard is seeing more rain than anything else. Some of this uh, pink areas are a mix of both of that. We're seeing some snow uh, that's been moving through on the rest of the I-84 connector area and in addition to that down around the Magic Valley now we're seeing more rain than anything else. We have fairly warm temperatures around jo Jerome and Twin Falls and we're looking at temperatures here that are warm. We still see some snow. You can see it coming down pretty good uh, right now in the Boise area. You can see it in the lights but it's a heavy and wet snow. We're going to see more temperatures are going to be warm with more rain. There's even a concern that we may eventually even melt out most of this in the valley and then it turns cold as we go to the weekend. Stick around. Got more news coming right up. What? From Idaho's News Channel 7, this is today's Morning News. Heavy wet snow has fallen across the area, four to six inches in some places, causing issues. We have an accident to let you know about right now. Idaho State Police are on scene of a crash on the westbound side of I-84 at mile marker 46. That is between the Eagle off ramp and the overpass. The left lane is blocked right now. That's going west again, so be aware of maybe slowdowns in that area. Many of you waking up to four to six inches of fresh snow, another dumping overnight. We have live team storm coverage this morning morning. Of course, schools closed once again. Here's an update for you, though. For those of you who live in Caldwell, you were going to have a 30 minute late start, but Caldwell School District has changed gears. They've decided it's just too dangerous to have school, so they are canceling school as well. I think all the school districts, the major ones, are shut down today. You can check out that list on our website, on our app, or at the bottom of your screen. We have it scrolling. That's right. And today was going to be Caldwell's first day back to school Their after first a very long holiday yeah. break, but they are not going to be going back to school no. today. We'll check in with Joe out on the roads in a minute, but first let's get to Larry. Uh, yeah, the holiday break continues, uh, obviously, for everybody else, uh, but we are looking at that heavy and wet snow. We still have flood advisories. Now, this one now has been extended until tomorrow, midday, uh, and of course the one that we have now over other areas has been an advisory that goes just until this afternoon. So some of these are being extended even as we speak. Uh, there's also one that we have out towards the eastern portion uh, of the western portion of the valley that's also being extended. Rain showers are mixing in with some of this and it's some heavy snow that we have. So even the snow that's coming down is still heavy snow. And in the Magic Valley, we're seeing more rain showers than anything else. That's why we now have a flood warning that's been issued until about 10 o'clock this morning because we're going to see some fairly rapid melting of some of the snow in the valleys of the Magic Valley. And of course, we have snow coming down here right now. It has limited our visibilities. We only have one and three quarter mile visibilities. That means the temperatures are still warm enough that we are seeing. Look at Jerome, 47. They've been pretty warm this morning. We we have some winds that is kind of making things feel colder generally out there for your wind chill. Now we're still talking about more rain showers through today. Temperatures are warm enough. Isolated rain, rain showers through tonight and into tomorrow. We could actually melt nearly all of the valley of snow, creating more concerns about flooding, uh, more rain showers, and then of course it's going to be cold as we head into the weekend. I'll have details about all that in a moment. All right, let's get out to Joe Paris. He is out on the roads this morning. Joe on the roads or our Joe cam and you can see snow packed roads out there on top of ice. Joe, tell us about it. Well, Maggie, we're on Lake Lowell Avenue right now in Nampa, and as we are driving through Caldwell and Nampa, these conditions are they're pretty bad, and with the freezing rain, that sleet coming down, it looks like the roads are getting a more uh, more slippery. We saw that Caldwell initially had a 30-minute delay. Now Caldwell has called off school, and we saw why. Very low visibility in Caldwell as we were driving through that storm here west of Boise, as you can see in front of us here on Lake Lowell Avenue again in Nampa. So much snowpack, so much ice, and underneath all this snow that you see in front of us is that thick layer of ice. We are here in Nampa yesterday and the road conditions were just so dangerous and you have that new precipitation overnight that freezing rain that slush and it makes uh, it makes it just so much worse and as you can see even here on an area where a lot of cars have been driving this morning it's so hard to get in those tire treads we're being thrown all over the place this morning uh, here in Nampa and Caldwell the conditions we saw were pretty similar to this I'd say a little bit worse we're getting reports that the interstate uh, is also a mess in both directions when we drove out on I-84 West about 
an hour and a half ago. Uh, there were some patches that were okay, but for the most part, the far left lanes on I-84 are a mess right now. So if you are driving, first of all, you're going to expect a lot of traffic as reported. There's that accident on I-84 and Eagle. When we were driving on the interstate, driving on the interstate this morning, you got to be very careful because those conditions are getting very slick and very wet. Yesterday, we told a lot of you that the interstate was actually a good way to take to work. If you can avoid the interstate today, I would definitely do that because it's a, it's a very bad condition right now. Uh, what you see in front of us, though, is what you're going to see across the Treasure Valley this morning. We heard about all the school closures. So if you're in Boise, Meridian, Eagle, Star, Nampa, Caldwell, drive careful this morning because what you see at our front dash is what you're going to see across the Treasure Valley. Maggie, really bad driving conditions. Everyone uh, needs to take some extra time and be as safe as they can. Yeah, Larry just walked in and told us it is snowing outside of KTVB right now once again, so it is still coming down out there. Please be careful once again. All kids mostly, I mean, it looks like it, are out of school today. Yeah. Check that list to make sure some of the smaller districts may be in session, but check our list. Uh, West Data, Boise, right, we'll Nampa, CUNA, Caldwell, Facebook. all out of school today. All right, Joe, we'll see you mm -hmm. in, in a little bit. But also, you know, it's this snow is really heavy it and is. wet today, too. But, and even with the snow we had before this morning, it's causing damage and some problems at homes. Yeah, it is very good practice to keep as much snow off your roofs as possible. But it's not just the weight of the snow that can do your roof in. It's those ice dams we've all been talking about so much. When you have a lot of snow on your roof and then it melts, the snow goes towards your eaves and your gutters. And then when the temperatures drop again, that snow caught in there freezes again. In the middle of the night, the Miller family's home began leaking because of ice dams. They grabbed buckets of hot water, they climbed on their roof, and they slowly poured along the dam. The next morning, they put a hose on the roof, melting that dam in the roof valley, got an extension pole, they broke off those chunks. Hooked up the hose to the washing machine, which is right here, and then you can just pull the little lever here, and then the hot water goes out. Roofers do warn, though, this is not the best move for every home because adding more water, of course, can add to the leak. So be careful, make sure you're cautious, but try and get as much snow off your roof as you can. Also, because of the winter weather, the waters of the Snake River are rising as are concerns about flooding in Payette County. The Payette County Sheriff's Office is warning people living in low-lying areas to get ready to evacuate. An ice jam extending from Payette to Washington County has caused a rapid rise in water levels. At one point yesterday, the water level rose two feet in just one hour. Then trees fell into the river, contributing to the ice jam. Authorities say there are about five houses expected to flood, but that number could could grow as the ice jam grows itself. Take a look at this video that our producer took just this morning outside of our studio. This was at about 2.30 this morning. She said the snowflakes were the size of golf balls out there. It just came down fast and furious, really piled up quickly, Larry. And you know what? We're going to be shoveling again today. Uh, we are. As a matter of fact, it's coming down similar to that. Not quite as large as snowflakes, but you can actually see from our sky cam shot that we definitely have quite a bit of snow uh, coming. But it, I can tell you, it is heavy and wet snow. And it's the kind of snow that settles almost about as fast as it comes down. Uh, and when you see, and it compacts very quickly uh, and everything else because we are seeing warm temperatures associated with this. In fact, we're at about 33 degrees. We have some winds out of the east southeast at about 8. Pressure is falling 96% for the humidity. Here's what's happening from our live storm tracker 7000. Again, Again, a lot of flood advisories still in effect. What's happening is they're being extended a little bit further now into Wednesday midday today this afternoon in some other areas. And of course, even in the Magic Valley, what we're looking at is a flood warning uh, that we have had for today that goes until about 1015. That's also been extended. That was earlier, but now till 1015. We're going to be looking at potential for some flood warning because we're seeing some pretty good rain that's moving through there. We're also seeing some of that now on the corridor. I-84, it has stopped snowing, but there's heavy, wet snow on I-84 for this morning and of course road crews cannot get to all spots. There's some wind out there too. We have some more snow. We had some rain earlier. Now it's more snow here in the valley location. You can see as we go through the time lapse how we have seen snow, rain, rain uh, on and off and it makes for very heavy wet snow and as Joe's been pointing out to us it is making it very difficult for driving especially in areas of the western portion of the valley. Now in addition to that this is still part of that system that is pushing in from the coast and it's not done. We have a bit more but there's an end that's coming in here. Now 
Now there's a low pressure cell here. There's also one to the north. The one to the north is going to stay further north, but slows down a little bit. That means colder air. It's not as strong, so it's going to go slower. As this finally plays out, we will get colder air that's going to move through. And for us, that means that we're going to be seeing some very cold temperatures as we wrap up the week and head into the weekend. But at least the snow will be done for a few days. And in fact, it looks like we're going to have about five days without any moisture. And that means we're going to be seeing some of this change. Your 7 First Alert Future Cast computer model kind of helps show that even as we go into this evening, we're looking at rain showers now, ricks of rain and snow, and that's going to be true in the valley locations. And it's going to stay mostly some rain, maybe a little bit of snow, but mostly some rain is going to come through. There's a potential concern that we could end up melting most of the valley snow, creating more problems for flooding, but then the cold temperatures will come along. Not all of that water is going to go away. That means we're going to have some ice in a lot of locations, especially subdivisions. So what we're looking at for today, rain, snow mix, temperatures into the 40s for the Magic Valley, snow. And here we haven't even talked about the fact that the mountain areas are going to be getting more than a foot of snow out of this system. They've already had lots of powder. They're going to be looking at more through the ski areas and again a foot above 6,000 feet. Most of it's going to be snow above 4,500 feet. We will see that rain snow mix and again with more rain than anything else as we go into tomorrow. Same thing around the Boise area with a high today of about 40. Your 7 first alert 7 day forecast where your weekend is always in view. Again a concern that we could end up melting a lot of the valley snow creating more flooding problems than cold temperatures and again that is going to be some ice that we're going to be contending with as we head through the end of the weekend into the weekend mm. looks like maybe now we'll finally get an extended break from I having think more, from more nice, moisture top. and then some cold temperatures maybe finally settle down a little bit yeah. out there yeah Get, a, right. get in front of it some. Okay, let's talk about something happy. How about okay. the Fly How about Fishing fly Expo? Fish. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming up at Expo Idaho Fairgrounds. We'll have details coming up in Where's Larry? Well, we have a traffic alert for you this morning. ISP is on the scene of an accident. We want to let you know more about it. Westbound on I-84, right near the Eagle Road off-ramp. The left lane is blocked right now. Look at the traffic out there. Is that frozen camera? I can't I think it's a frozen camera. I think that's frozen camera. It is, but that's but westbound. It is backed that's, up, yeah. But yeah. westbound probably is moving pretty slow. The yeah. left lane blocked right now, so avoid that area if you can. It's busy out there. Really, if you don't need to be on the roads today, don't get out there. It's a mess, and you know what? If you don't have to go anywhere, why not stay home and just watch us? You know, I mean, this has <laughs> you know, been going on enough days with the school closures and everything. Honestly, today is really, in the terms of the roads and what Joe's reporting to us and what we've all seen, that this is probably the worst day we've had so yeah. far. Yeah, I mean, in terms, in terms of road conditions, this is probably more justifiable for all of the concerns about staying mm -hmm. home today. Yeah. It really is definitely a worse yeah. day. Hunker safe, down, watch some movies. Sorry. It'll be better know? by this weekend. It Just will be. in time for the Fly Fishing Expo. Okay, Here, then. Check this out. Hey, we're at Expo Idaho because we are talking about the Fly Fishing Expo that's coming up. It's going to be this weekend, Friday, Saturday. Eric Mankata is with us to see. To, now, this is like, it's everything fly fishing. It's but everything it's, fly It's fishing. even bigger than it's been in the past. It's even bigger because now we have the big room. And that means we can do two-handed casting, which is spay casting and switch casting for steelheaders that are out there that have always wanted this in our in our expo show. Right. So now, do we need to be a fly fisherman? Do we need to know what we're doing? Or can just basically somebody who just wants to know be here? Somebody that just wants to know. And the cool thing about this year is that even the women, the Fly Fishing Women Club that's here in the, in the Treasure Valley have gone through all types of measures to come up with workshops for women, casting demos for women, and different presentations specifically for women to, for anybody who doesn't know anything. Um, about fly fishing, they can come in here and feel absolutely comfortable. Fly tying, everything. All right, it's going to be on Friday, and it's going to be from noon until 9, and then on Saturday, it's going to be from 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. here at Expo Idaho. If you missed any of that, check it out online. Go to Where's Larry, KTVB.com. It'll be a nice diversion. And we do have, we yeah. do have all that yeah. information. Like I said, there's a nominal fee, of course, for attending. Well, anything you're, you know at the fairgrounds is always a nominal fee for that. Uh, so expect that, but otherwise, really, it's good. Seminars, uh, demonstrations, fly tying demonstrations, all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Sounds like fun. Thanks, Larry. Well, back to this wild winter we've been having. It is causing quite a bit of damage from homes to businesses out there. We're talking about that. Many are affected by roof collapses. We have the latest damage for you coming up. But first, you got to see this. Idaho isn't the only state with snow days <laughs> this week. Check out how this principal announced his snow day. Do not do this, yesterday. kids. This is dangerous. And our picture of the day is from the first person section of KTVB.com. The caption says, this is my kitty Bubbles, and she loves the snow. I sure hope they don't lose Bubbles or... I think she's a snow leopard. Any children in these piles of snow out there, <laughs> be careful out there today. They're just piling up huge, huge piles of snow outside my house right now. The kids are loving that. 6.45 on this day 
five snow day. Yep, we're on day five now. We will be right back. And now you gotta see this. This is pretty funny. A North Carolina principal posted this video on YouTube Sunday announcing that school would be canceled yesterday due to snow there. Of course, it did not stop there. This guy had a lot of time on his hands and boy, did he have fun. And the school to himself. <laughs> yeah. So he embarked on a Ferris Bueller-esque adventure by uh -oh. dunking baskets in the school gym, <laughs> joking that he was going to Xerox his, his backside. Bum. He uh, yeah. tipped the mascot out of the rafters oh, so it would hang dear. by its feet. Look at this guy. Not a mascot dressed in a costume, by the way. And he also um, <laughs> made some uh, roasted marshmallows by putting them He's over the bus. What burn. a personality. Yeah. There are so many principals and teachers here in town that have a lot of personality like this, too. Actually, had graham crackers and chocolate. I think he's making s'mores. This, so, so, this, yeah. though, this, this is, is dangerous. Yeah, got the I'm glad he has don't the helmet on. Don't kids, try this yourself, children. Do not do this at home on your stairs, kids. He is a trained professional Yeah, this principal. is not smart, but he's yeah. fine. Yeah, he has a mattress, mattress the down there. And then he moved anyway. He did have a mattress to catch him. <laughs> he did have a mattress to, catch him. Have a mattress yeah, to, but to stop him, yeah. Yeah. Larry, yeah. you say today is probably one of the worst days out there. Actually, in terms of the way the roads are, at least uh, certainly for what Joe is uh, indicating, as if we have Joe on the road again for this morning, uh, with, the, with the mix, the heavy snow and rain, uh, definitely a, a, a far more difficult day for travel uh, for everyone. Everybody, especially by car, uh, even out at the airport, uh, we're seeing reduced visibilities, uh, which means that there's going to be some delays at the airport. If you've got flights inbound, outbound, make sure that you check ahead. Snow is actually still pretty heavy. We're looking at rain now more than anything else in portions of the Magic Valley. And you can see that we still have snow here. We're at 32 degrees. This is a heavy, wet snow. We're going to have more rain showers, a high of 40. Your 7 first alert, 70 forecast for your weekend is always in view. It's going to get cold after all this finally wraps up and we get a chance to dry. Doug? Thank you very much, Larry. Well, the last couple of days have been difficult for some local business owners and, and homeowners in eastern Oregon and western Idaho. Look at this damage outside the Les Schwab. Gate TVB's Dean Johnson toured the region yesterday and shows us what he found. It's one more thing the town may lose. I, I don't know if he'll rebuild or not. The Weezer Lanes has been a staple for more than 30 years until now. I don't know. It just went. It happened really fast once I heard it. Poof. For the last 26 years, John Schmitz has lived right next door and was outside when the building decided to go into the gutter. I was shoveling snow off the back of my roll deck wrecker and uh, I heard a, like this slide uh, of snow sliding off a roof. So I just looked up at the bowling alley and I seen the snow going down but not out. And then it just kind of woof down and then it blew out debris and dust. John says thankfully no one was inside at the time of the collapse and this is all that's left after a demolition crew came and knocked down the rest for safety reasons. The blessing is no one was in there. No one was in there to get hurt. But the Weezer Lanes wasn't the only business affected by the snow. The Les Schwab in Ontario had the front of its building collapse due to the weight. A manager on site said thankfully nobody was hurt but there were three people under it at the time. The manager says one of them heard it starting to crack and yelled at the other two to get out. He added that today they had debated whether or not to send someone up on the roof to clear out some of the snow, but didn't due to safety concerns. And the nonprofit Blazing Hope Youth Family Ranch is asking for a little help today after the snow collapsed its horse shelter. Thankfully, no people or horses were hurt. Dean Johnson, Idaho's News, Channel 7. Last weekend, we got a lot of reports of covered patios carports and awnings uh, going down because of this snow. We were able to talk with a roofing expert. She says those carports are just not meant to handle very much weight at all. So it's best that you try to get as much snow off as possible, especially with this storm adding to those totals. Maggie. Well, we are less than two weeks away now from President elect Trump's inauguration. The process to build a cabinet for him continues today with two confirmation hearings for his picks. We're going to tell you what to expect coming right up. Stay tuned. Well, happening today, it's the first big test of President-elect Trump's cabinet nominees in Washington. Today, hearings include Senator Jeff Sessions for Attorney General and General John Kelly for Homeland Security. Sessions will be challenged on his civil rights record in Congress and as U.S. Attorney in Alabama, where he won murder convictions against the KKK, but lost prosecuting three black men for voter fraud. Civil rights icon Congressman John Lewis will testify at Sessions' hearing. More nominees set for tomorrow and Thursday. And NBC has learned four do not have complete ethics reviews.
Democrats feel very strongly that pushing for a thorough and thoughtful vetting process is the right thing to do. To prepare his nominees, they uh, underwent 70 hours of mock hearings. Let's take a break from weather and politics for a second. Did you catch the nail-biter national championship game last night in college football? An instant classic. The Clemson Tigers are college football national champions this morning for the first time since 1981. Clemson QB Deshaun Watson led his team down the field to throw this winning touchdown pass with just one second left. Final score, 35 31. With the loss, Alabama's Nick Saban falls short of claiming his sixth championship, which would have tied him with Bear Bryant for the most all time. But back to back years, Clemson and Alabama, what a game. great games, and now they each won one, so it's a great rivalry now. Yeah, a great game last night, of course, overshadowed by this weather this morning and our traffic situation. Let's take a look out there this morning. You can see traffic here looking very busy because we have a traffic alert for you this morning. ISP on the scene of this accident westbound on I-84 right near the Eagle Road off ramp. The left lane is blocked right now. Avoid this area if you can. Really, Larry's advice is avoid the roads. <laughs> at all today well, you know, if I you mean, can Joe that's really, an option yeah uh, joe paris of course uh, joe is out on the road again this morning but indicating just how much of this heavy wet snow and it really is because temperatures remain right near freezing we've had a mix of both rain and snow through the area in many different locations uh, we're seeing some of that even right now uh, around by the meridian area along interstate 84 uh, fairly near where you're talking about where that crash just happened now we're looking at a rain snow mix there we've already seen some of that as some rain and snow we have a little bit more uh, down around through even into the glens ferry area and then rain showers uh, in the magic valley we have a warning a flood warning now more than just an advisory for that area that goes until l later this morning. We're seeing 33 degrees. We do have some snow and it is heavy wet snow. We're going to be seeing more rain showers. There's even a concern that we might melt out nearly all of the valley snow, which means even more problems with flooding and then cold temperatures. We'll be following that. Maggie, Doug? All right, let's see what the situation is this very second out on the roads. Joe Paris standing by right now with a look at the conditions. Joe. Mm -hmm. Well, Doug, uh, the conditions aren't getting much better this morning as we're heading right now. We're heading from Nampa to Meridian on Amity. We want to check out what things look like in Meridian. So back in Canyon County, though, in Caldwell and Nampa, we saw some really bad conditions. Uh, we can definitely see why they closed school this morning. The real problem we're seeing is all this ice and stuff that had been stuck to the road over the last few days. That's now being trapped by new inches of snow and slush, and it makes the road conditions extremely dangerous out there. So especially uh, if you have to go out early this morning, leave the house early because your morning commute is going to be ugly. Our average speed in Canyon County was no faster than about 20 miles an hour. The roads there, very, very dangerous. A lot of you asking us on Facebook Live where we are right now about the road conditions on I-84 in both directions. Of course, you guys have heard about the accidents we've had on I-84. The actual road conditions for themselves are gross. There's not as much ice on the pavement on I-84 right now, but what we're seeing is so much slush and so much buildup that it gets into your tires and it throws your tread off and it throws you out of control, and that's where we're seeing the slide so if you don't have to take the interstate this morning, I would suggest you avoid it. If you do have to take it, pack your patience. In the city of Boise right now, road conditions are a lot worse than we saw yesterday. They look like they do uh, in front of us right now. So, Doug, if you do have to drive across the Treasure Valley this morning, uh, be very careful. These road conditions are some of the worst we've seen in weeks. Uh, good advice, Joe. And Joe's been using the word gross to describe the conditions. It's yeah. pretty sloppy out there. Not bad. good. And yeah. once again, schools closed today. This is Snow Day 5. We will be back in a half hour with more news and weather.